planning a sermon can be a tricky business. But this week, I thought that I had it all down pat within the first couple of days of looking at the gospel. We all know the story of Mary and Martha. And I thought I'd start with the usual story. Oh, and then I'd pull out my cell phone and pretend, oh, somebody called me. I, I'm in the middle of doing a sermon. I can't talk right now. Okay, I'll call you later. And, and put it away. And that would give me the perfect inroads to start talking about distractions. We are all so distracted today by our phones, by our kids, by our spouses, our work, all the daily chores of living. I was going to relate this to Martha, who the gospel said was distracted by many tasks. Then I would have talked about how her distraction kept her from Jesus and related how our distractions do the same. I would have encouraged you to keep mindful of the important things in life and not let yourself get distracted by the less essential things, and to keep your focus on God. Bing, bang, boom, sermon done. Everybody could relate to it. Everybody would understand it. Good, right? Then I had lunch with a colleague in the middle of the week, and that visit stuck in my head. I think the Holy Spirit was getting to me and not letting go. You see, after all the reminiscing and catching up about our work, our travel, our spouses, she asked my advice about a family issue she was having. Her husband's sister had a problem, and my friend got involved in that problem, but then didn't know what to do. Her niece was getting married. Any of you who have ever planned a wedding, you know how hard it can get and how easily people's feelings can get hurt. That's what happened here. The mother of the bride felt left out as her daughter seemed to be working with her future mother-in-law for all of the wedding planning. And her own mother felt like she was just another invited guest. My friend, trying to be helpful, went and spoke to the mother-in-law about it. And it opened a whole ugly can of worms. People got angry, nasty words were spoken, hurt feelings grew deeper and deeper, including more and more people. So the dilemma they have now is that the wedding is in August. My friend and her sister-in-law don't think they should go because of how disrespected they feel. My friend related to me that they felt like they needed to take a, a stand and draw a line in the sand and teach that daughter that this is no way to treat her mother and her mother's family. She needed to apologize to them and recognize what she did. While my friend ranted on about this, I could see her getting upset as she spoke. So I said nothing and let her get it all out. When she finally stopped, she wasn't really prepared for what I had to say. I know she thought I would agree with her and be astonished at how terrible the mother of the bride had been treated and agree to a man that her daughter need to be taught a lesson. She thought I would concur with her that the mother of the bride, and by now the whole bride side of the family, should boycott going to the wedding. Instead, I said, no, you should all go. And not only go, you should be nice. Tell the bride they love her. Tell her how beautiful she looks. Enjoy the day. Thank everyone for all they did to help put this all together. But otherwise, keep your big mouth shut. My friend, she stared at me for the longest of time. And it, but what about, it doesn't matter. But what about, it doesn't matter. I asked her to think down the road. So what is your long-term gain in not attending the wedding? I said to her, someday there may be a child as a result of this marriage. Does the mother want to be known as a grandmother 
Does she want to see the child? Maybe be present at the birth, attend the baptism, celebrate birthday parties? If she draws a line in the sand now and doesn't attend the wedding, she may be cutting off all future ties. Is that what she wants? When she asked me about how the mother should let the daughter know how awful she feels about being disrespected in this way, I said, that may not even be necessary. Her daughter made a mistake, made. But the mistake was made, and people make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Who even knows what was going on in her daughter's mind? Maybe it was all unintentional. But now she could really be hurt by all the fuss being kicked up. It just doesn't matter. This is her daughter. I said, I know I couldn't imagine cutting my daughter off, no matter what. I told her, love and forgiveness is what is needed. She said, that is so hard to do. To which I replied, forgiveness is not for sissies. Forgiveness is not for sissies. This brings me back to Mary and Martha. Martha had to be pretty upset to go to Jesus and say, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Imagine saying that. Or if you're like me, think back to when you might have said those kind of words yourself. I mean, I, I grew up in a family of six kids, and I know I said those same words to my mom. Why isn't Patty helping out? How come only the girls have to do the dishes? I mean, those things come out in real life. For someone who was trying to be a gracious hostess, as Martha was, she really kind of blew her hospitality by calling Mary out in front of everyone. So you know there had to be an awful lot of built up anger and resentment in Martha. And we all know what that feels like. And Luke, who wrote the gospel, then just leaves us hanging. After Jesus responds, story ends. We don't know what happened next. Did Martha also just sit down with Mary next to Jesus? Or did she go off in a huff, angry that Jesus didn't make Mary come and help her? We don't know. But we do know is what Martha was feeling, anger and resentment. And we know in order to get over those feelings, she needed to let go of those emotions and exchange them for love and forgiveness. The harboring of bitterness takes a greater toll on the person who is holding on to that more than anyone else. It is never good. Forgiveness is hard. But being a Christian means to forgive. It means to forgive the big event fights, like at a wedding or hosting Jesus and all of his followers. But it also means forgiving the daily provocations that come to us from all sides, including the domineering mother-in-law, the bullying boss, the nagging spouse, the ungrateful children, or a deceitful friend. God has forgiven us all of our sins, we are to do likewise. As we pray, forgive us our trespasses if we forgive those who trespass among us. You see, it, it goes both ways. As C.S. Lewis said, we are offered forgiveness on no other terms. To refuse is to refuse God's mercy for ourselves. So my takeaway from hearing the familiar story of Mary and Martha this week is not really what happened in the gospel, but might have happened afterwards. And I pray that we all learn the lesson of love and forgiveness in our lives and move beyond our hurts to the joyous blessings that God has given us all. 
To live our lives as Christians, we must remember, no matter what, move on, love and forgive. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.